and become death, the destroyer of worlds. Imagine being the architect of a discovery so profound it could illuminate the mysteries of the universe, yet so devastating it could wipe out civilizations. Known as the father of the atomic bomb, Julius Robert Oppenheimer ushered in an era of unprecedented power and unparalleled dread. Beginning from a very young age, Oppenheimer showed an intellectual capacity that could be likened to that of a child prodigy. His thirst for knowledge and pace of learning were so advanced that he often found himself bored with the slower learning speed of his peers, prompting him to skip portions of other classes. From the earliest days of his life, Julius Robert Oppenheimer's intellectual prowess was a force to be reckoned with. An insatiable hunger for knowledge was the hallmark of his childhood, which allowed him to rapidly outstrip his peers in intellectual advancement. Such was the velocity of his learning that he frequently outpaced the standard curriculum, finding himself unchallenged by the slower pedagogical pace of his traditional schooling. However, the same intellectual capabilities that saw him excel academically also sowed the seeds of social isolation. His exceptional abilities distanced him from his peers, placing him in a unique situation that was often difficult for others to understand or relate to. This narrative of social isolation is similar to that of the fictional character Sheldon Cooper from the TV series Young Sheldon and Big Bang Theory. Much like Sheldon, Oppenheimer's academic successes were shadowed by social challenges as he struggled to navigate interpersonal relationships and social norms. One unique aspect of Oppenheimer's personality was his peculiar forgetfulness, which seemed to apply primarily to things that did not kindle his intellectual curiosity. His memory was selective, often choosing to disregard matters he considered mundane or not sufficiently intellectually stimulating. This quirk manifested itself in unusual ways, one of the most infamous instances being a peculiar incident during a date. On this occasion, he was driving with a woman when an intriguing scientific idea suddenly dawned upon him. So deeply was he ensnared by the complexities of this thought that he impulsively left the car, completely forgetting about his companion. He wandered off to muse over his newfound idea, leaving the woman bewildered in the car. Hours later, he was found at home, still engrossed in his intellectual pursuit, oblivious to the woman he had unintentionally abandoned. Such episodes added to the unique tapestry of Oppenheimer's personality, a brilliant mind that continually wrestled with the everyday realities of social conventions. Oppenheimer began his extraordinary academic journey at the illustrious Harvard University in the fall of 1922. Despite grappling with a severe bout of colitis, which cost him an entire year of high school, his undeniable intellectual prowess quickly vaulted him ahead of his peers once he stepped onto the Harvard campus. His academic interests were as wide-ranging as they were deep, with a primary focus on on chemistry, while also delving into a multitude of other fields including languages and philosophy. His intellectual thirst knew no bounds, and his profound understanding of these various disciplines positioned him uniquely amongst his contemporaries. Oppenheimer's academic excellence did not go unnoticed. He was invited to join the esteemed Phi Beta Kappa Society, an honor society that acknowledges and celebrates exceptional academic achievement among undergraduates. The society, with a legacy that dates back to 1776, extends invitations only to students who have shown remarkable dedication to their academic pursuits and proven their intellectual mettle. Oppenheimer's inclusion in this prestigious society was a testament to his deep-seated passion for knowledge and his extraordinary capacity to acquire and understand complex information. Further demonstrating his intellectual capacities, Oppenheimer did not follow the typical four-year timeline for his undergraduate degree. Instead, he compressed his studies into just three years, accomplishing what most would find challenging. His accelerated pace was not merely a testament to his intellectual prowess, but also an indication of his relentless work ethic and dedication. The culmination of his stellar academic journey at Harvard came with his graduation. However, he did not just graduate, he graduated summa cum laude, a Latin phrase meaning with highest praise. This is the most prestigious academic honor that Harvard bestows upon its students, reserved for those who have displayed exceptional intellectual prowess and academic achievement throughout their studies. Oppenheimer's academic interests were far from narrow or constrained. In addition to his profound understanding of chemistry, he harbored a deep appreciation for French and English literature, immersing himself in the works of classic and contemporary authors. His intellectual pursuits also spanned the fields of physics and geology. As evidence of his early passion for geology, he was invited to deliver talks at the New York Mineralogical Club at the tender age of 12, a testament to his precocious intellectual abilities. Later in his career, Oppenheimer ventured into the enigmatic field of cosmic rays, which added 
added another feather to his cap of academic accomplishments. His work in this domain culminated in the co-authorship of a paper in 1931, contributing to the burgeoning body of research on this mysterious and fascinating aspect of physics. Oppenheimer was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Physics on three separate occasions, in 1946, 1951, and 1967. However, despite these recognitions, he never managed to clinch the esteemed award. Despite this, his substantial contributions to the scientific community were acknowledged when he received the highly prestigious Enrico Fermi Award, an accolade recognizing his groundbreaking work in the realm of atomic energy. His widespread and significant contributions in various fields firmly positioned him as one of the intellectual titans of his era. Oppenheimer was also known for his acts of generosity, such as financially aiding his German relatives, including his Aunt Hedwig and her family, to escape the Nazi regime and emigrate to the United States. The year 1943 marked a monumental shift in Oppenheimer's career trajectory. He was appointed as the scientific director of the Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico. This unassuming location would soon become the epicenter of one of the most significant scientific endeavors in modern history, the Manhattan Project. The initiative, authorized by President Franklin D. Roosevelt, was an urgent race against time during World War II, with the daunting objective of developing atomic weaponry before Nazi Germany could. Oppenheimer, up to this point, had primarily immersed himself in academia and theoretical research. His appointment to this significant administrative position was met with initial skepticism due to his lack of experience in organizational and management roles. However, Oppenheimer's unique combination of deep theoretical understanding and a keen sense for practical implementation swiftly dispelled any reservations. His ability to bridge the gap between abstract theory and concrete application made him an invaluable asset to the project. As the scientific director, Oppenheimer found himself at the helm of a team composed of some of the most brilliant scientific minds of the time. A pivotal moment in the Manhattan Project, and indeed in the history of warfare, was the Trinity Test in July 1945. This test marked the world's first successful detonation of a nuclear device. The test, named Trinity by Oppenheimer himself, took place in the barren expanses of the New Mexico desert. The magnitude of the explosion, equivalent to 20 kilotons of TNT, surpassed even the scientists' expectations and lit up the early morning sky with a brightness greater than daylight. Following the detonation, Oppenheimer famously recalled a verse from the Bhagavad Gita, a sacred Hindu scripture. The verse, which encapsulates the terrifyingly destructive power of the weapon he had helped create, resonated deeply within him. He said, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. The culmination of the Manhattan Project saw the creation of two different atomic bombs, Little Boy and Fat Man. While Little Boy was a relatively simpler gun-type fission bomb, Fat Man used a more advanced implosion method, showing the depth of the scientific breakthroughs achieved during the project. These two weapons soon found their way into the harsh reality of war. A mere few weeks after the first successful detonation of a nuclear device during the Trinity test, the bombs were deployed against the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945. The detonations of Little Boy over Hiroshima and Fat Man over Nagasaki resulted in unprecedented destruction, causing an estimated 110,000 deaths and leading to Japan's surrender. This marked the end of World War II, but it also heralded a new era of nuclear capabilities, casting a long and complex shadow over the world's geopolitical landscape. Witnessing the catastrophic impact of the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Oppenheimer underwent a profound change of heart. The man once dubbed the father of the atomic bomb began to view these creations with a sense of horror and regret, classifying them as weapons of genocide. He was deeply troubled by the indiscriminate destruction and loss of life, leading him to publicly voice his opposition to the further development of nuclear weaponry. However, this opposition, coming from the very person who played a central role in the creation of the atomic bomb, raised eyebrows. Adding fuel to the growing suspicions were Oppenheimer's known associations with several individuals who were suspected of having communist sympathies. These connections were especially controversial given the backdrop of the Cold War and the prevailing fear of communism in the United States. In 1954, these suspicions culminated in a security hearing that stripped Oppenheimer of his security clearance, marking a fall from grace for one of the most prominent figures in American science. Oppenheimer's reputation was severely tarnished, and he was cast into the political wilderness. His character and loyalty were questioned, and his distinguished career was overshadowed by the cloud of suspicion. However, as time 
time passed, many within the scientific community and beyond began to question the fairness of Oppenheimer's treatment. Activists and fellow scientists launched campaigns to restore his reputation, arguing that Oppenheimer's opposition to the development of nuclear weapons was a moral stance rather than an act of disloyalty. Their efforts finally bore fruit in 2022, when the Department of Energy, after an exhaustive review of the case, publicly acknowledged that Oppenheimer had been treated unfairly. Newly declassified documents provided fresh evidence that Oppenheimer had been a loyal citizen who acted out of deep concern for the future of humanity. This recognition marked a belated but significant step towards restoring the reputation of one of the most important scientific figures of the 20th century. The life of J. Robert Oppenheimer is a potent testament to the complexities of genius. His journey, from early academic prowess to his critical role in the Manhattan Project and subsequent ethical stand against nuclear proliferation, paints a vivid picture of a man of many layers. His story continues to echo in our times, reminding us of the power, responsibility, and moral considerations accompanying scientific discovery. If you like this video, you'll love the books. Check them out on Amazon by searching up Scott Matthews. Now check out the seven shocking truths they don't want you to know about the Titanic.